Hi, this is my 91st video. Um, in this video, I'm going to be reading to you chapters um, 13 through 16 of The Magic Apple. I got a haircut and it's a lot shorter than before. Usually, my hair was like up to like here, so it's a lot shorter. So, yeah. So, basically, um, t yesterday, last week was chapters 9 through 12. This week is going to be chapters 13 to 16, and next week I'm going to finish the book. And the following week after that, it's going to be all the all the chapters all put together into one, like, one-hour book, one-hour book, audiobook. So, if you like this, comment down below if I should do a book two. If not, I don't know. But anyways, now here's chapters 13 to 16. Chapter 13, Escape from the Hole. Jake was confused because he didn't feel that different. Concentrating, he made a fireball with his hand. Jake realized that he still had his weaker powers from before the tournament. Jake didn't want to give Scrap to change his mind, so one by one he flew all the former prisoners, Mike went first, and Flash last. Jake was the first to join Spart and his mom, back of the stands. They quickly walked back to the giant doors to leave the stadium together. When they got to the door, they were relieved to find it open. Scrap suddenly blared over the loudspeaker. None of you will escape! The door suddenly started to close. Everyone jump! Jake yelled. They all jumped hard and landed outside. Jake turned back to look at the door. As the cracks started to close, he saw a spa spar stuck inside the room. We have to get out of here, Sarah said. Not without spar, Jake cried. No, it's too dangerous. We need to move, Sarah yelled. Who cares? At least I escaped, Flash sneered. Sapir hit him on the back with the end of her shoe. I hope spar is okay, Sapir said with her concern. Hopes Crap's fidget spinner's okay. No one should mistreat a fidget spinner that wonderful, Midal added. You care more about a fidget spinner than Spar? Jake asked. Well, they're both terrible, but if I had to pick, I would pick the fidget spinner too, Flash replied. Fine, but we're coming back for him, Jake said as he and Sarah vanished from the area. A few minutes later, when everyone had left, Jake was there to Sarah. Mom? Right before the clo doors closed, I saw that Spar was changed. What if I lended him some of my powers so he can get free? Good idea. But maybe you should give him a message first, Sarah replied. Okay, Jake said, focusing on his mind power. He tapped his forehead. Done, Jake said. Now let's give him my power, he added. And the only place to do that is, Sarah said, tapping her forehead, the transfer machine? Jake and Sarah had said at the same time. Spar has one in his house. Maybe we should go there, Jake suggested. Then, Jake grabbed Sarah and teleported to the front yard of Spar's house. Jake teleported to the car, too. That way, if anyone saw them, they wouldn't ask the questions. Do you want to knock? Sarah asked. Okay, Jake replied, raising his hand to knock. Suddenly, Jake jumped back in the air. I have such a good idea! What? Sarah asked, surprised at Jake's sudden movement. How about I use my mind control power to make Spar's mom think I'm Spar? That way she doesn't get worried, Jake said, smiling. Wow, what a wonderful idea, Jake. Sarah agreed warmly, patting him on the head. Mom, you just made me lose brain cells. Hey, Jake teased, trying to be scientific. Try to try to act like Spar, Jake, Sarah said. Okay, Jake replied as he knocked. Good afternoon, son. I got super worried. Why did you leave and where is Jake? Sarah's mom asked. Oh, um, Jake is in the car, he said. He's, he said he'll come back when he finishes a chapter in his, um, book. Yeah, book, Jake said wildly, trying to make up a lie. Okay, can you tell him to come in? We have brownies on the stove tonight. It is Jake's favorite day of the week, Sarah's mom said suspiciously. Sure, no problem. By the way, do you know what time it is? Jake asks. Oh, it's three o'clock. Why are you asking? Spar's mom asked. Don't know, just wondering, Jake said, running off to the car pretending to be Spar going to get Jake. Sarah walked in after he left. So, how's it going, Sarah? Spar's mom Ashley asks. Oh, things are going great, Sarah said while she rubbed her back. Ashley, can I go to the car and get my itch cream? Sarah asked. Sure, go ahead. Meet me at my couch, Ashley said. Then, Sarah jogged to the car. Jake, Sarah whispers. Ah! Mom, you scared me, Jake yelled. Can you make her think there is a duplicate of herself and turn into Spar again so that Ashley won't be worried? Also, we'll also have to make sure she's not wondering, Sarah suggested. Okay, Jake said, turning into Spar. Then they walked in the front door. Jake's mom was walking, but the real Jake sprinted and accidentally crashed into the closed door. Are you okay? Sarah said. That seems painful. I'm fine, Jake said, getting up. Wait, hold on. I tell his power, remember? Jake said, yes, I remember, but I thought Scrap took your power, Sarah replied. I know, but in the transformation, he took all the power I want, except for mine, Jake explained. So you don't have the, his power? Wait, you do. But how will that help us? Sarah asked. Well, I was thinking, 
Maybe I should transfer half of my power to Spar using my teleport power, Jake said happily. Okay, then do it. But I think you should give him a warning, Sarah said. Jake made a ball of power in his hand, then teleported it to the last place he saw Spar. He also sent him a warning on a piece of paper. Part 2. Helping Spar. Stopping Scrap. Chapter 14. Trouble. Back at the stadium, Spar was chained up in the entry room. What did you do to my friend? whined Spar to Scrap. He shook the chains and tried to get loose. Scrap walked in circles around him. Your stupid friends escaped, but you will not, Scrap yelled. No one calls my friend stupid. He's the best in math in my school. I bet you don't even know what 10 times 301 is, Spar yelled. That's easy, 300, Scrap said confidently. No, it's 3010. Even James can solve that, and he's the worst at math in my school, Spar said. I don't care, Scrap screamed. Now it is time. You're going to be as hot as fried meat. Once the room hits 100%, you'll be fried meat, Scrap said, turning the dial and the heater up. He laughed as he backed out the room. Oh, the percentage is rising, Spar said, looking at the heater. He was starting to sweat. Ten minutes later, the percentage was already at 75. Spar's head was mad at his face from sweat, and the metal chains were beginning to burn his arms. He slumped to the ground where he found a message on the ground. The second he touched the paper, he felt some power come surging through his body. Then he read it. Dear Spar, 7 13 14. I transferred my power to you. Use to escape from nothing else. You have my power for two and a half hours. Good luck. From Jake. Cool. I have superpowers now. To escape. Spar said to himself. Next, he shot fire at his hands to break the chains. In the meantime, Scrap woke up from his nap in the fanciest room of the stadium. I'm going to see how Spar is doing, Scrap said to himself. A few moments later, Spar heard some footsteps. Then the doors opened. Scrap was in the front of the of it, holding two knives. But in the nick of time, Spar teleported to Jake and Sarah. No! Scrap yelled. He was furious. Chapter 15. The Rise of the Final Battle A few seconds later, Spar teleported back to his living room where he found Jake and Sarah on the couch. He quickly sat next to them. Ashley came into the room. There you are, Ashley said to him. Does anyone want lemonade? Skylar asked, walking into the room with a pitcher. Me, please, Jake responded. Are you sure, Jake? You already had two refills. I think you should eat dinner, Skylar suggested again. Okay, what is dinner? Jake asked. Oh no, my mom is making dinner. She wants it to be a surprise. We are also making chocolate chip cookies as a dessert, Skylar said, washing her hands. Chocolate chip cookies are my favorite, Jake said. Jake, I still have an hour of your power, Spar said to Jake. Wait, what? You have Jake's power? Ashley said, starting to raise her voice. I don't have my power. You were just playing a game. You pretended to steal some of my powers, Jake said, trying to hide their secret. One hour later, it was 7.30, and Jake and Spar were playing soccer. Spar, come here. I have a secret, Jake said. What? Spar asked. You don't have my powers now, right? Jake whispered. No, it went away 20 seconds ago, Spar replied. Good. I don't think we can hide our secret anymore, Jake said. In the meantime, down in the desert, Scrap was riding a camel. Where is the cave? He shouted. According to the map, the cave is right here. This good for nothing map, Scrap said in anger. After riding the camel for a few more minutes, Scrap f- spotted a lever sticking out of the sand. Yes, Scrap said, moving the lever. Suddenly, a sandstorm came and blew Scrap off his feet and onto the ground. Meanwhile, a few feet away, a cave appeared. The inside of the cave was completely black, beside a pair of small red eyes in the back. Who released me from a millionaire curse? A loud voice said from the cave. Me, Scrap. And in return, I want a staff that can hold all my powers in it, Scrap demanded. Certainly. But if it breaks, you will lose all your powers. You have two wishes left, the cave said. Fine. Jake will pay for his actions. And so will Spar, Scrap said. Then Scrap teleported behind Spar's house. Everyone, including Crane and Sarah, were outside of the house. Right away, Jake and Skylar saw Scrap in the bushes. There's Scrap! Attack! Jake screamed. Then, all of a sudden, Scrap shot 20 bullets of fire from the staff, straight towards Jake and Spar. Watch out! Shield! Skylar said, making a fire shield to protect the house. How did you do that, Skylar? Do you have superpowers too? Scrap screamed. Yes, I do, but only to protect, not to destroy. Because I had the magic orange when I was three, and Jake had the magic apple last year, Skylar said, explaining everything. How do you know about Jake eating the magic apple? Spar said, confused. Probably because she has superpowers, Spar, Jake said. Also, the shield can only hold for 15 minutes. 
Another bad thing is that someone we don't know has eaten the magic pineapple, Skylar said. Oh no, only five more minutes until the shield breaks, Jake said. What? That's impossible. I just made the shield, Skylar said. It's not impossible. Scrap took out ten minutes of the time, Jake explained. But how? Ashley said. He weakened the shield with some water, Jake replied. Wait, what if you teleport us to a field where we have more space to move around? That way it will be easier to fight Scrap, Sparse said. Good idea, Jake said. Then he teleported everyone to a soccer field. Good thing the field is closed, Sarah said. In the meantime, Scrap was very confused. Where did he go? Scrap exclaimed. Let me use Mike's power to read Jake's mind, Scrap said to himself. Scrap read Jake's mind and teleported to the soccer field. Surprise, losers! I found you! Scrap said. Ah, you scared me, Spar said. Now, get ready for the final battle, Jake said. Chapter 16. The final battle begins. There was silence. Why are we not attacking, Skyler said, impatiently. Be patient, Skyler, Jake said nicely. Yeah, be patient, Crane said, being mean to Skyler. Shut up, Crane, Skyler said, getting mad. Then Skyler's phone started ringing. My phone, Skyler said. Guys, did you know that this photo on Instagram has 32 likes? Skyler said again. We don't care, Spar said. What? In the photo, they're only dated for four months. Skyler said, texting on her phone. Attack, Scrap said as he thought bu bullets out of the fire. Then, in the nick of time, Skyler used her shield power to block the bullets. This shield can hold for three hours, Skyler said. Just then, Scrap teleported back to the cave where he opened the cave a few hours ago. I want to make my next wish, Scrap said. Go ahead, the cave said. I wish I had the power to create an indestructible army which, can I, can, which I can control with my staff. Scrap said. Then a flash of light traveled from the cave's red eyes to, into Scrap's staff. Yes, you're even better than a genie, Scrap said. Then he teleported back to the soccer field.